my name is Paula Almiron. I'm the Partnership and Funding Manager at EIT Food Northwest. So today we have an event to explain the guidelines of the 2022 call uh, for innovation projects in the food systems. We are going to start our agenda today with a welcome to EIT Food Northwest. Then we are going to have a speaker on consumer center innovation activities is going to be led by Nora Elfick. Uh, Fiona Goodman is going to talk about the scope of innovation of the innovation call and the alignment with EIT food strategy. Um, Jennifer O'Mara will talk about one of our focus areas, especially at our regional office that is targeted nutrition. Then we're going to do a short interactive activity on Mentimeter that is called Your Innovation Challenges. And finally, we're going to go through the guidelines. You can ask some questions about the guidelines after that. But of course, as Fiona said, you can drop any message uh, to, your, uh, to the chat that you have available. And uh, we will try to answer to those questions uh, after each uh, talk. So we're going to start with a short introduction. So EIT Food is part of EIT. EIT is the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, and it has different knowledge communities. One of them is uh, EIT Food, but you have EIT Health, EIT Digital, EIT manufacturing. So these are different uh, knowledge communities and they work independently. There are some cross connections, but we're going today to talk about EIT food and our regional office Northwest. So we have five uh, regional offices in Europe and our office is in the Northwest region, which covers Iceland, Ireland and the UK. Our mission is to create a world where everybody can access and enjoy sustainable, safe and healthy food with trust and fairness from farm to fork. Our strength comes from our partners, from our community. Those are the ones that deliver the projects that are tackling the most challenging uh, problems that we have in the food systems in Europe. And of course, they are modeling solutions for the rest of the world. What are our strategic objectives? Overcome low consumer trust, create consumer valued food for healthier nutrition, build a consumer centric connected food system, enhance uh, sustainability through resource stewardship. Educate to engage, innovate and advance. Catalyze food entrepreneurship and innovation. Specifically at our regional office, we have three focus areas. Sustainable agriculture, sustainable land use and targeted nutrition. These three focus areas are very much entangled with our geography and with our uh, socio-demographics in, in, uh, in the three countries that are part of our region. How do we work? We have four axes and the axis that uh, is gathering us today is the innovation one. Why we are saying this? Because the innovation call is part of the innovation axis. So uh, the innovation axis uh, launches each year uh, one general call, like the one that we are uh, presenting today. But there are some specific calls, for example, the aquaculture call that was for aquaculture projects. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit more in detail about this call later today, but just taking account that is a general call for innovation projects. So anything that is under the umbrella of our strategic objectives, independently of the region, it's on the, on the scope of our call. We have other, uh, other axes, for example, education, entrepreneurship and public engagement. It is not the purpose 
of this presentation or the whole event to talk about this, but I will be happy to talk with you one to one in, in a meeting about these topics if you want to engage in any of them. So our community is large. We have uh, different uh, actors, different players from the knowledge triangle, from education and universities, research centers, and the food industry and businesses in general. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, a very strong community. So here you can see uh, some uh, very familiar brands and corporations, also universities that are very famous and have a, a strong and very positive reputation. But these, uh, these brands and these companies are not only a name, they are people who work uh, hard in, in the innovation and uh, projects that we have. And we are very pleased to have uh, this community. For, for us, it's very important the networking component, the collaboration uh, to, to achieve uh, larger goals. So here you can see a picture of our last uh, partner event in Malaga. So we had a, a chance uh, to have a gathering all together and to start thinking about the future projects that we want to develop. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to pass uh, now the floor to Laura, Thank you, Paula. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, can everyone see my screen okay? Let me just make it full screen. Yep, can see it. And um, do I need to swap over or is this looking okay? Um, we can see your presenter view. Okay. Is that better? That's it now, yeah. Um, perfect, so good morning everyone. Um, my name is Laura Elphick and I am the Communications and Engagement Officer at EIT Food Northwest. So I work for the regional office that covers the UK, Ireland and Iceland. And I just wanted to spend a few minutes this morning um, speaking to you all about consumer centricity, why this is important for us at EIT Food and why this is relevant to the open innovation call that gathers, gathers us all here this morning. So Paula did touch on our strategic objectives um, and one of these is to build a consumer-centric connected food system across Europe. So consumer centricity is essentially the heart of food systems transformation for us. We really believe that to co-create the future of food, um, consumers need to be a part of the process and they need to be involved from the very start. Um, and essentially, um, we support consumers um, to do this in a variety of different ways. Um, and on the screen, you'll see that we've got four impact goals at EIT Food, and you'll see these come up again and again. Um, but essentially what we're saying is we believe that consumers have a role to play in helping us actually achieve these four different goals. So talking about consumer-centric um, innovation in particular, so if and when you do decide to submit a proposal for our open innovation call, we really encourage you to think about um, using a consumer centric activity design um, in your proposals, saying how you're going to really collaborate and work with consumers to really achieve what your project is going to set out to do. And we really believe that co-creation starts at the very early stages of innovation, whether it's in the process of ideation um, and design to implementation. And a few examples of this, so thinking about doing things like market research, getting feedback from consumers on minimal viable products that are being developed, um, actually working with consumer organisations and consumer groups who have really good connections with consumers already. Um, and also getting feedback on things like product testing. So 
what we're saying is that a lot of the time it's going to be consumers who are going to be using these products, services and new technologies that are being developed um, within our umbrella of innovation. So why not try and involve them um, from the very start? And I guess one thing to note is um when proposals do come to be evaluated um by our evaluators and um, they will take this into consideration and um, they will have a look and think oh have they really thought about um how they're going to involve um, consumers as a key stakeholder um in their activity um and consumer centricity is relevant to all our focus areas and my colleague fiona will touch on these probably a little bit more um but eit food we've got six um focus areas um and paula she touched on the ones that we focus on in our region which are targeted nutrition sustainable agriculture and sustainable aquaculture um but you can submit um proposals across these six different areas and essentially, at EIT Food, we believe that consumer centricity and the over, overall transformation of the food system digitally are two things that um, sort of underline these six different areas. And these two things are important to, to each of those. So just a couple of examples. Um, we're saying that consumer centricity is relevant to all focus areas because consumers are impacted by each of these different areas in different ways. So depending on which area or areas you may be interested in focusing on, um, we really believe that consumers are involved in each of these. Um, so whether it's thinking about targeted nutrition and developing personalised products um, for different consumer needs, um, whether it's considering that consumers are becoming a lot more interested in and engaged in whether their food is produced sustainably, um, it's just important to, to consider them. Um, I'm going to stop this presentation here because I don't want to overrun, um, but if you've got any questions about this topic, um, do feel free to drop them in the chat and we can try and answer them as best we can. Um, but yeah, thank you for your time this morning and I'm going to pass back to Paula. Thanks, Laura. I think it's very important the topic that you have talked about because uh, consumer centricity is across all uh, our uh, strategic objectives. And sometimes uh, in some of the projects, we don't have a clear ideation on this. So we are going to have now uh, Fiona Goodman. Uh, so please take the floor. Hi everyone. Yep, thanks. My turn to speak now. And I'm just sharing my screen. So um, hopefully, hopefully everyone can see that now. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to stop, talk for a few minutes. Um, you'll find a theme emerging that we keep talking about the same things and that's because it's all really important to us. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of an, um, an overview of the EIT food strategy and the importance of aligning calls, uh, any of your kind of proposals with our strategy. So I will start with, with this, which is our vision, which I'm sure you will agree is, is, is a very empowering vision and, and um, you know, a world where everyone can access and enjoy sustainable, self, safe and healthy food with trust and fairness from farm to fork. And obviously what Laura was talking about was consumers are very much at the heart of that vision as well. In addition to the vision, the applications need to demonstrate alignment with our impact framework focus areas and KPIs. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail in any of these. You'll be glad to hear. We do have um, further information. We do have a document that tells you all about these, which will be available to you after this. Uh, I think Paula will send you out a link. It's on the website al already. And that goes into quite a lot of detail about the focus areas and the KPIs that EIT Food have and what we're expecting the any proposals to, to contribute to these. Just briefly, because um, some of this is going to get covered later on as well, but we're looking for collaborative uh, activities which will bring innovative technology solutions to the market. So um, key points, collaborative. Uh, so we are looking for consortia to submit proposals. And again, Paula will be covering that later. 
Um, we are looking for one or more commercially viable innovative technology solutions. That could be good services, processes or products, but they have to be aligned with our focus areas, which um, Laura, Laura has already mentioned and I'll cover again in a moment. So they need to be near, near to mar market. They must have a technology readiness level of level seven when you're submitting the proposal. And we're looking for at least one innovative solution by the 31st of December 2023. So these are the these are the absolute key elements that we need to expect to see in all of the proposals. OK, just briefly um, to go over some of our impact goals. So again, uh, with the consumer centric approach, improvement for in conditions for enhanced public trust in the food system, better health outcomes from our diet. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to keep reading these. You can read these. But the important thing is that they're, they're part of um, EIT's food goals. We don't expect that your proposals, uh, your applications will cover all of these, but we do expect that they cover at least one of these points. Um, to go with these goals, of course, we have impact indicators and KPIs, and there are a lot of details in our call annex. So the document that you will be able to download, which runs about 50 pages, actually has quite a lot of detail on impact pathways. So that gives you just a kind of idea of where EIT food sits. Doesn't mean that you need to be ticking all of the boxes. That's our job but we do look for the innovations to be covering at least one of our goal areas. Oop. And finally, if I can get this um, to, to show, thank you. Um, again, the focus areas, which um, Laura has already talked about. So these are the areas that we believe offer the greatest potential for innovative solutions to emerge in the food system. So Laura has already mentioned them. I won't read them out again here. You can see them. But the fact that we're mentioning it again just emphasizes how important it is. These are the areas that we are looking for innovation. These are the areas that we're looking for in your proposals. Consumer centricity at the heart of it. Digital transformation of the food system is at the heart of it as well. There are further details again in our call annex, um, our, 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 our call document in the annex one, which goes into focus area challenges. Uh, Laura's already given you a flavour of potential consumer centricity in each of these sections. And in a minute, Jennifer is going to hone in on one area that's of specific interest to EIT Food Northwest, which is the Iceland, uh, Ireland and UK element that we are all responsible for. But I would like to just emphasise that the document you'll be able to download later does give you some examples of the focus areas and how they might be delivered, but it's not uh, an all encompassing and it may well be that you have other solutions in mind that would meet our objectives. So, um, so please, uh, we are here to answer questions. So, and that's not just today, but, but later on as well. So if you have further questions, Paula would be the person to contact. So at that point, I will finish and I will pass over to Jennifer, who's going to talk about one of our specific areas um, of focus in a little bit more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Paula, would you be able to share my slides, please? Brilliant. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer and I am a childhood nutrition researcher here at EIT Food Northwest Regional Office. So targeted nutrition is taking a personalized approach to nutrition products, along with dietary guidance to create behavior change towards healthy tailored diets. And this is one of our focus areas. It's a very timely innovation as globally childhood obesity has tripled from 4% in 1975 to just over 18% in 2016. And this has caused changes to our dietary pattern over this period, which has greatly influenced childhood obesity rates. And this is something we're currently working on. So we're working on a mapping of policies and programs 
targeting childhood obesity within our regions of Ireland, Iceland and the UK, as Fiona has mentioned. Focusing specifically then on our regional rates of childhood obesity, um, one in four children are overweight or obese in Irish schools. And then um, in a class of 30, then this is on average 7.5 children. The number then of children overweight and obese at reception in primary one in Wales is just over one quarter, which is higher in England than England and Scotland, which is one in five. In Northern Ireland, we have one in five children are overweight. And then in Iceland, the total obesity rate is among five to nine year olds is one in three. And one in 10, four to five year olds in England are overweight and obese with just one in five, 10 to 11 year olds and one in seven overweight and obese. So this has caused a lot of great resistance among parents around the topic of their child's weight as they don't want to appear a failure but at the same time they don't really like their child being classified as overweight or obese so it creates a lot of difficulty in creating successful interventions as as well we've discovered a lot of the programs and policies have a theme centered around healthy eating and also a lot of lifestyle changes with a lot of a lack of established measurable um, objectives and a lack of impact and evaluations making it very difficult to know the true impact of a lot of policies and programs um, and as childhood obesity is a very vast topic it makes the importance of having adequate programs and policies alongside targeting nutrition and also early intervention very crucial to combat this issue so having the food industry and other stakeholders collaborating to design innovative products and activities Supporting the younger, younger generation is very crucial to allow them to have healthier food choices. Thank you. To all organizations, it doesn't matter if you are a partner already of the EIT food community, uh, you can become a, a partner later on. So at the moment of the proposal, you don't need to be, to be a partner or to become a partner before that. After uh, the submission of the proposal, and if it is selected through a competitive process, you would have to become a partner. So which are the organizations that can uh, be eligible besides uh, the country eligibility that we have mentioned before? They have to be a legally incorporated entity in the EU or an associated country to Horizon Europe in the last two years. In the case of the UK, uh, uh, Horizon 2020 also applies. At least one year's publish accounts showing business activity. At least two statutory offices, such as registered directors. We can go to the next one. Okay. Oh, I don't know what happened there, sorry. Okay. So uh, it could be the previous one, sorry. The previous one. Okay. Okay. So we, uh, this is a part that already Fiona mentioned. So we need one or more near to market commercially viable innovative technology solutions. And this had to be aligned with our impact framework. Um, we need to have at least one marketed innovative solution by the 31st December of 2023. And this solution has to have at least 10K revenue in euros. Activities ending in 2024 will need an additional marketed solution. Next one, please. As part, of, uh, or, or, as part of the Horizon Europe uh, framework, all activities have to continuously disseminate and communicate uh, the results and the, any information that could be engaging and interesting for the general public. We need to have a, a strong engagement between our citizens and consumers and the research and the innovations that we are developing. So this is very important. We are going to highlight this again and emphasize this again because it needs to be part of the budget. It needs to be designed at the beginning. You need to have um, short uh, communications or, you, I mean, you can make them longer. It depends on you, but you have to have some sort of frequency on the dissemination of your results. The submission process is going to have two parts, part A and B. I'm going to go through that later on. It's, uh, it's just a normal grant proposal. 
And both parts have to be submitted by uh, the 14th of January, 2022 uh, at the end of the day. So this is CET, you, you have to consider uh, the time uh, the time zone when you when you uh, make your submission. Please, uh, Fiona, could you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, the timeline is already published in the uh, in the call in the call guidelines. Uh, so you can find uh, this in the call guidelines. So we are at the beginning. So this is, this could be like the first part. The guidelines have been published. They have been published on Monday. Uh, we had yesterday one info day, today is the second one with a lot of technical problems and uh, so you're going to have more webinars that are going to happen later in November, so at, in mid-November you're going to have another info day if you want to attend from the Inno team, the innovation uh, team, and also you have uh, other webinars on how to write a good proposal or the use of Hype, one of our uh, platforms for matchmaking uh, that could be of your interest. This could be later in November, and you have to consider that uh, just you know to organize your times, uh, considering that the application is in mid-January and that we are at the end of the year with many holidays in Europe and uh, many other obligations such as financial balance and etc. Please go to the next one. So what are uh, the requirements of your team, your consortium? So we need a minimum of three organizations, three different organizations, three it could be universities, companies, etc from at least two different countries. So yesterday in our info day, uh, one of our partners asked us, so do we need to have uh, diverse uh, regional offices? For example, we are the regional office for the Northwest region, and uh, then we have a regional office in the South, in Spain. So no, you don't need to have uh, partners or uh, prospective partners from different regional office. You just need to uh, have uh, partners or uh, prospective partners from eligible countries from at least two different eligible countries. So consider that, uh, that those countries have to be associated in case you're making a proposal, uh, consider the risk on that. So uh, we need also uh, to represent at least two sides of the knowledge triangle. This means that you need to have at least two parts of this. Education and universities will be one side of the knowledge triangle. Then we have research centers that don't have uh, the teaching activity or the trainings that an education, a higher education institution has. And then we have businesses and uh, the food industry. In any of your consortiums, uh, sorry, in any of your consortia, you're going to have uh, an activity leader. Uh, this is the person that is going to respond for uh, the outcomes, uh, is going to help the other partners to meet the deadlines and to deliver all the obligations that you will agree. Um, so it is recommended that the activity leader, uh, it, it's, it could be better if it is the commercializing party. Um, we are going to go through that later on. The technologies that are going to take part of uh, these uh, of this call have to be, have, sorry, have to have a maturity of TRL seven or above. And you have to present documentation that TRL six has been achieved. Okay, okay, we can go to the next one, please. Okay, just one second. So um, if you want to have, uh, if you want to be an activity leader, you need to be an employee of the organization that has uh, that role in the activity that you're proposing in the proposal, in the, in the, in the grant, in, in, the, in your proposal for the grant. 
The activity leader is responsible for the overall management of the activity. This is what I was mentioning before. It is very important. I mean, it's a very, uh, it's a strong position in the, in the activity, but it's also a huge responsibility because in the case that the rest of the team does not respond properly, the leader will have to uh, report that or will have to ensure that those goals uh, are going to be achieved. So it's a lot of responsibility. What are uh, the exploiting parties or parties? So we need at least one per consortium, per team, and they have to be legally registered uh, at the time of the application. You would need also a consortium agreement that is going to be signed. We can go to the next one, please. Um, in each of your proposals, you are going to have KPIs. Uh, there are some mandatory KPIs. I'm going to go through them now. And then you have some strongly recommended KPIs that you should follow. Uh, besides these two uh, segments, the mandatory and the strongly recommended, you can add more. So one of the mandatory KPIs are one or more marketed innovation. We have Fiona has said this before, and so it has to have a 10K revenue at the end of the 31st of December, 2023. Um, and also we need one or more design, uh, sorry, I, I will uh, just go bear with him. So one or more marketed innovation innovation, including documented sales revenue of at least 10,000 euros in the year the KPI is to be delivered. One or more design tested innovation to be achieved within six months from the start of the activity. And we need to continuously disseminate results. So this is quite important. You're going to be monitored, so you have to do it. And it's also important from the citizen's perspective. Uh, all activities must deliver KPI outcomes in each calendar year in which they are funded. The, there are other uh, KPIs that are specific for the education uh, activity. So if you want to go through them, we can talk in a one-to-one -one meeting. Um, okay, let's go to the, the next one, please. So what's the grant size and duration? We are going to have a maximum amount of grants per partner, per organization or prospective partner of up to 400K for 2022 and up to a maximum of 1.4 million during uh, the lifetime of 2022 to 2024. The maximum duration of the activity is going to be 24 months. And of course, each year you're going to be monitored at least once and if the monitoring has uh, a negative uh, assessment perhaps the next year is not going to be funded. Uh, the maximum co-funding from EIT food is going to be a 60 percent of the total eligible cost of the CAVA of the activity. This means that you need to find co-funding of at least 40% for uh, from any sources that are not EU funds. I think that there was a question in the chat uh, regarding this. Okay, let's go to the next one, please. Um, another point that is new besides the, the fact that now uh, external organizations can take part of the call is that we have to, um, just submit different documentations regarding the financial return and that we have to do a financial return. So um, why we have to uh, do all these documentations and uh, these documents regarding financial return? Because we have to contribute to the EIT food financial sustainability strategy. The minimum uh, required financial return of all the grant funded from EIT food is going to be 50%. So you need to uh, you need to consider this. You will have to uh, 
submit a financial return mechanism agreement agreed and signed by the exploiting parties and EIT food. There is uh, some possibilities of, of uh, designing this uh, in different ways. Uh, it's not the purpose of this event to talk about this, but if you need more information, we will be happy to support you on this. Let's go to the next one, please. Sorry, did I go too far with the or just one? Um, sorry. Okay, great. Right, saying it, sorry, that's right. Oh, it, it could be the next one, sorry, Fiona. Ah, sorry, sorry folks. Yes, I don't know what's happening today with, you know, technology is right. just- So you've yeah. covered that one. Yes. And you need the next one. And my mouse is not responding. There you go. That's it. Okay, so um, proposal requirements. So we have to comply with the mandatory KPIs that I have mentioned before. We need to have a minimum of 40% for funding. Uh, we need to uh, develop and design and submit a financial return mechanism of at least 50% of the EIT EIT food grant budgeted. And you have to sign an agreement on this. All right, let's go to the next one. So regarding the activity budget structure, there are predefined cost categories of the Horizon Europe program. You can um, address them. Costs should be budgeted separately for each legal entity partner affiliated entities and prospective partners. Indirect costs are calculated automatically as a 25% flat rate of some of the direct costs according to Horizon Europe regulations. Budget planning should consider uh, Horizon Europe uh, rules of cost eligibility and as I was mentioning before you need to include communication and dissemination activities in the budget because this is a requirement you're going to be assessed on this and you have to hire, I mean, it's not, a, it's not an obligation, but it's recommended to hire professionals in this matter. Um, okay, let's go to the next one, please. There are different legal documents that you will have to sign. Some of them are new. So in this call, we have partners and prospective partners that are going to take part of the call. So uh, if you want to ask more questions regarding this, you can, um, we can have a one-to-one -one meeting. And there are activity specific agreements. Uh, the one uh, that is uh, new is the financial return mechanism agreement. The other ones are just the new versions of uh, other uh, previous agreements. Let's go to the next one, please. So uh, the, you're going to be evaluated in two parts, part A and part B. Uh, both parts are going to have more or less the same uh, categories or variables that are going to be considered. So excellence, impact uh, pathways and KPIs, and quality and efficiency of implementation in the part A. And in the part B, you're going to go through excellence, implementation and impact and financial return mechanism. I don't know, Fiona, if we have passed the how to submit uh, the slide. I'm not sure about that. Uh, this what is the next one. Next one. Um, so I think that we have to go like two or three back. Um, Here, thank you. So yeah. how to submit a proposal. So for the new, uh, the new organizations or the organizations that are not already in our community. If you're a partner, you have it a, a little bit more straightforward. If you are a new organization, the first thing that you need to do is to register for the call at the link that we have here on the screen. 
So suppose that you make your team, you make your consortium, you have all the people that are going to be part of it. Uh, they all have to do this. They all have to be registered. Once this is met, uh, you're going to have your activity leader that is going to be the person that is going to submit part A and B. And uh, that person is going to select the partners and prospective partners that are going to take part of your activity. So it works like that. And of course, if you need any help, you have to uh, talk with us. Uh, you can just drop an email, contact us, anything that we can do to help. All consortium partners need to be registered on Plaza and the activity leader when everybody is on Plaza registered is going to start the, the, the proposal and submit it. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go Let's go on Fina, sorry. Okay, so we have mentioned these two parts, okay? Yeah. Part A and Part B, these are the parts that you need to submit for the for the proposal that's what uh, the activity leader is going to do and uh, we have the payment schedule so this is quite important especially for uh, small companies and uh, well it's important for everyone i think this payment schedule so you have to consider that we depend from big eit so the 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 one that is like the mother of all the knowledge communities so uh, we depend on the EIT uh, schedule and then we cascade that, uh, that payment to our partners and prospective partners. So I'm going to go through this. Uh, the total EIT grant awarded to EIT Food for Business Plan activities is transferred in installments by the EIT to EIT Food. EIT Food's financing flows are therefore dependent on the payment schedule implemented by EIT. A proportion of the activity budget will be pre-financed pre with, with subsequent payments being linked to the achievement of milestones. This is what I was telling you before. If you don't, if you're not successful through your monitoring, perhaps you're not going to have a second year of funding. Okay, so I think that we can go to the next one. Okay, so we have finished. So I'm very sorry for, for the, technic, the technical problems that we had. Um, I, uh, well, I tried to do my best, but I didn't have my notes with me, but uh, uh, thank you for your attention. I will go through the questions now.